Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial and this is the ninth in the series of Python Bytes. In this one we're going to be looking at the power of lists and why they are in fact one of your best friends. That's what we're about in this tutorial so without further ado let's see if we can make this happen. I'll grab a cube and make it 20 by 20 by 20. Put a fillet on it, just say 0.5. That would be perfectly good for us. And then I'm going to grab hold of a cloner. I'll hold down my shift, or rather my option key, and grab a cloner. And my cube is in my cloner, and we can see that we've got nine cubes. We actually want a grid of six by six and we want to make our size 21, 21 and 21. Could in fact be zero in the middle, that's fine. Okay, so we've got our array set up and we're gonna be using this actually a little bit later. What I'm gonna do is go into my transform window and in color here, I'm just gonna make this orange. So we'll just say one, two, seven in there. And we've got a, an array of orange cubes. 36 in total. That's fine, so we'll leave that for later. Now initially, I'm just gonna grab a Python effector, switch to full control, and then select my scripting layout and open in Python editor, and then remove the loop as I always do, and hit execute just to bring things back to the center. Okay, hypothetically then, let's just clear this out actually and select Python. Hypothetically, let's take a look at defining some variables here. So for a start, we'll use our ubiquitous frame variable. So frame is equal to doc dot get frame dot get. I beg your pardon, it should be get time first. Time get frame brackets doc dot get fps open double close so we've got our frame variable set up and we're also going to define a global and we're going to say v for variable that's as much as i'm going to do here with regards to defining variables moving on from here i'll say if frame is equal to zero v equals zero and that's as much as I'll say in there the next thing I'm going to do is define two functions so we'll say define function underscore one I'll just put pass in there for a second and then copy all of this and replace one with two. So I've got two functions defined, we've just got to put something in them. Now all I'm gonna do in here is put v is equal to one, and in here, print, and I'm gonna say v. Now, I've put v in parenthesis, I have to do that because I'm using release 25 of Cinema 4D and the version of Python we've got requires you to do this. If you're using an earlier version you may not need the parenthesis so you can just say print v without the brackets. But anyway to finish off this piece of code we'll just put else and then we need to call both functions so we can select this here copy and paste and do the same here. just paste that in there okay fantastic so that's as much code as we need we've got our frame our, our frame set to zero if we just advance one frame let's see what happens when we do this okay so we get a zero now what we've done we've set our variable here to zero we've called function one and in function one we've said that v is equal to one and then we've called function two which is print v, 
which is what we've done here, but we're still getting a zero. We're not getting a one, which we'd expect to get, wouldn't we? So what exactly is going on here? Well, we've said global V here. So we would expect that this would be a global variable, but it isn't. This variable here is a local variable. It belongs to the function here, and it doesn't belong to anything else. In here, we haven't defined any variable. We've got just print V. So what we're doing here is printing V from here. We're printing this global V that's being defined here, which is why we're getting a zero. Now that's a bit of a problem because of course, we'd like to be able to do something with V in this function and then print out the result or maybe even do something else. I mean, we just said print there for an example, but we could do something else with V in here and then hopefully add to this one or maybe subtract from this one, multiply this one, whatever. But we can't do that because this is a local variable and we need it to be a global variable. So is there a way around this? Well, this is where lists come in. If we were to say V is equal to and put the, the zero in brackets like this and then say V brackets zero is equal to one in function one. And if we then said print V brackets zero in function two, if we clear this out now, go back to zero and advance, now we get one. Because now V is truly global and it's working here and it's working here. So this is where lists are very, very powerful and very, very useful. And as I say, they are one of your best friends. So that's just one example of where lists are useful to us. Of course, there are plenty of other things we can do with lists. For example, where we've got our cubes here, suppose we just wanted the outside edge or the outside rim, let's say, of cubes to be orange. And we wanted these four here to be red, these to be green, these blue, and these four yellow. Again, we can use lists. What we'll do, I'll just shut down this Python effector and select my cloner and hold down option and grab a hold of, in fact, I don't even think I need to hold down option. I should be able to just grab another Python effector and I can, and it just works. So let's say full control, open in editor. Again, we'll remove the loop, hit execute to bring back everything to the middle. And then we'll move on from here and start looking at what we can do to set up some groups and color our clones. The first thing I'm going to do is define some global variables. So I'll say global red, global green, global blue, global yellow. and also global surround. And that will be for the outside rim. So they're my global variables set up. Once again, I'm going to define my frame variable. So I'm going to say frame is equal to doc get time get frame doc get fps open double close and that's perfectly good so i've got my frame variable and i've got my globals well and truly defined as per usual if frame is equal to 0 and now we can decide what we're going to do with red green blue yellow and surround so if we say red is equal to, now what we can do in our cloner, we can select our transform tab here and we can select index and we can 
just change our view to a top view and zoom in on our clones. So we can see that the red clones are these four here. So we'll say red is equal to open brackets and we'll say 19, 20, 25 and 26. So that's our reds defined. Green is equal to and we've got 21, 22, 27 and 28. 27 and 28. Blue, 7, 8, 13 and 14. Yellow, 9, 10, 15 and 16 and 16 for those. OK, and then finally surround. And I'm going to go this way clockwise, so I'm going to go 0, 6, 12 and then across the top and, and down. So let's just work these out. So let's see where we are. So we've got 0, 6, 12, 18, 24 and 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 29, 23, 17, 11, 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. And that gets all of our lists set up. So we've got all of our clones grouped as they need to be, and this will enable us to do various things with them. But the only thing we're interested in is working with color. Another thing we actually need to do, speaking of color, is to copy this, paste it in here, and say car is equal to, and it will be mo data color. And down here, we also need to copy and paste this and do the same thing here. So we need to say mo data color and car here, just to make sure that we update the color array as well as the matrix array. Okay, fantastic. So our next port of call is to simply define another function. So if we say define, we call it setup. What we're interested in is now setting up our colors. I'm just going to change back to my 3D view. Also in my transform, I'm going to take away the indexes. So we're now ready to define this function. So we can say for i in range, and it will be CNT for count. So we're going to sequence through all of our clones. If I in red, we can then say car square brackets I is equal to C4D dot vector. Oops, vector. And it will be one comma zero comma zero. And that will color these clones red. Similarly, if I in green, again, we'll copy this and paste it in here. And this time it will be zero comma one comma zero. If I in blue, paste this in again, and this time zero comma zero comma one. If I in yellow, paste once again, 
and this time it will be 1 comma 1 comma 0 and finally if I is in surround we can simply say car is equal to 1 comma 0.5 comma 0 so it isn't really going to change anything they're already orange I mean if you wanted to see a difference what we could do in here is simply change the color to I don't know cyan say we'll leave them as cyan and then when we run this they will turn orange so that's fine we'll leave that like that okay so we've got this set up the next thing we need to do to finish it off we've got to call the function so as a, I'm not going to say else I'll just call the function so I'll simply say set up brackets and that will call the function so let's just close this down and straight away I've clicked back to zero and you can see that we've got what I said we would get we've got a surround that's completely orange we've got four cubes that are red four greens four blues and four yellows all by using lists of course there are other things that we can do we don't just have to change the color there are plenty of other things we can do with this and I do plan to revisit this and create an effector that will basically move the reds up and down the greens will be scaled the blues will rotate and the yellows will flash on and off I'm also going to make the cubes sequence through changing from orange to cyan one by one using a modulo I'll make them do that and it, and it will basically progress around the edge over time so it'll be a, like a multi effector it will be an effector that does just about everything you can want it to a kind of an all singing all dancing effector and I will return to that at a later date but as this is a Python bytes tutorial I'm going to bring it to a close there because that's as much as I wanted to really show you here and it just goes to show you the power of lists and how useful they are for grouping clones uh, and of course creating variables that are truly global and can be used in any function. So hopefully you've learned something from this tutorial and you can use what you've learned in your own projects. And if you've enjoyed it, then please give the video a like. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please share this video because all this good stuff helps to keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, for now, that wraps this one up, so I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.